Whether it's in the air, on land, the sea, or under it, the SimNet is your simulation network. Alrighty, today we are going to be assembling this, the Wizzo Grip from the F4 Phantom. This particular version is compatible with the Thrustmaster and Verpal style controllers. Uh, reason being is I have upgraded to an FFB Rhino for my main base, uh, and so I have an extra Verpal base lying around, uh, and I wanted to remove the springs to make sure that there was no tension so that I could use it as a uh, side controller uh, like the real Wizzo Grip in the F4 Phantom. So the real Wizzo Grip doesn't actually have any uh, sort of play. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of spring forces. It's it's loose. Um, so removing the springs from the vertical base means that uh, uh, it's a pretty good approximation of the actual Wizzo controller in the F4. Now, before we get into the assembly, I just wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. Uh, PCBWay has uh, very quickly become my one-stop shop for all uh, 3D printing needs for materials that I don't have readily available. So I print in PLA, um, that's what I prototype on, uh, and when I want to complete a unit, I usually print it in either resin or nylon or aluminum. Uh, really depends on what the project requires. Um, so you get these really nice finished pieces here. This one's 3D printed in aluminum. Uh, and it has the Thrustmaster style connector at the bottom. Uh, so that means that uh, it's compatible with bases like the Ava base and the new uh, or the older uh, Thrustmaster Warthog style base as well as the Verbal bases uh, if you remove the screws from the Verbal base. There's also a version here uh, which is just a flat plate um, and that's uh, that's similar to the one that I use for uh, for my Verbal base. Um, the Verbal base has uh, some serrated teeth uh, well, actually, no, it doesn't. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Um, it's got a flat metal uh, face, and this is kind of, uh, it's not perfectly flat, it's not perfectly smooth, so it actually uh, uh, interfaces quite well. So both of these files are available on the Thingiverse page for the F4 Phantom Grip, which I'll link in the description below. And uh, also want to thank PCB Way for uh, sending me over this piece. Um, so this is a, component for the, uh, for the, f I'll call it a fusion of the F5 and F4 extensions and F15E extensions. It's kind of a, a mish mishmash of all three. Uh, and the reason I did this was because I wanted something that uh, could fit on top of my Rhino and bring the stick a little farther back without going too high. So I've got a 20 centimeter extension from Verpal, but I just found that the grip was sitting a little too high. Uh, and when pushing forward, um, the grip was uh, kind of out of my reach. Um, so this extension is a, is a good mix of the two. And this one's actually 3D printed in aluminum and they've done an excellent job. It is quite hefty, uh, which I, I guess is to be expected given that it's mostly solid on the interior. I think if I were to print this again, uh, I would probably do more of a shell uh, with uh, with a thickness like this, like a four millimeter uh, thickness like here, uh, because it is completely solid on the inside and it is quite hefty. I haven't weighed it yet, but it's uh, it's pretty significant. And um, this also includes the, uh, the aluminum box on top here uh, for the paddle style uh, switch. Uh, so again, I'll do a video on this uh, coming soon. Um, and this extension will be posted on the Thingiverse page as well, again, for free. Um, if it hasn't been already, I'll double check that and I'll link it in the description. Um, yeah, this is a nice little box, uh, very similar to the F15E extension. In fact, the same as the F15E extension on the Cults page. Um, and this is uh, um, just, I've, I've taken this piece and applied it to this. Uh, curved extension, which I use again for the VP Force Rhino with the uh, MFC Blackbird chair. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, let's get into the Wizzo controller. So um, this is a very exciting project. I wanted, again, something that would work with uh, existing verbal bases. Um, and uh, so it leverages a uh, similar style of connector. 
Um, now, I will note that for because this is quite small, it's meant to fit in the palm of the hand like this. Um, the traditional style uh, Thrustmaster connector would have been a little bit too short and um, the uh, tangs here would have stuck out uh, quite a bit. Um, so I updated the connector. This is specific to the Wizzo grip and I've moved uh, these pieces a little bit higher. So now they sit about yay far. Um, uh, so that's, this is a little bit different. It's unique. So if you've already printed one for the F4 Phantom grip, uh, I would recommend printing a new one uh, for this. Now I printed this one in plastic because again, there's no spring forces on the Wizzo grip. Uh, so I'm not afraid of uh, this piece snapping. Um, so uh, hence the, the plastic. Uh, and additionally, I, uh, this project uses a Devil Estes 4021 register. Uh, I think this is the shift eight, something along those lines. So it's only one shift register, one uh, resistor array. Uh, still has the capacitor and the the capacitor and the uh, resistor on the top, and then the five pin mini din connector as well. And uh, if we count the inputs here, we've got one, two on the trigger. So this is a two stage trigger from the uh, trigger, universal trigger project. Um, in this case, I've used a V1 trigger, although a V1 and a V2 trigger would work as well. I've just found that the V1 trigger has a little bit less travel and works a little bit better for this Wizzo grip. Uh, and then we've got the uh, RU style push button. Again, I love these push buttons. They've got uh, a good amount of travel and uh, a very definitive click. Um, so it feels better than a tacked switch. And they are uh, very similar in dimension to a real uh, P1 switch, if not the same amount of uh, force. Um, uh, so similar amount of travel, a little more travel in the P1. Um, I mean, I guess technically, nah, not quite. Um, the most of my grips are, are cross compatible with uh, real P1 switches. Uh, so the, in this case, the Wizzo controller uses a slightly different uh, uh, push button piece here. Okay, um, so that's one, two inputs, three, and then another three inputs. So for the uh, scroll wheel, I've actually used a five way. Uh, so that gives me up, down, and then push as well. Um, I've been using the push for uh, gesture commands um, or pilot commands or the gesture wheel when I'm in the back seat uh, or the Iceman wheel, sorry. Uh, so it's just one additional input uh, that the real Wizard Grip does not have. And again, in the real thing, this is a wheel that you scroll. Um, however, because I'm using uh, this PCB, which does not have analog inputs, I've just used a button. Um, so. That's uh, a limitation right now. Um, I haven't uh, quite figured out yet how to uh, run an analog through a verbal base. Um, I'm sure there is a way and I'm sure other people have figured it out. Uh, but the nice thing is because these files will be free, um, if anybody can figure it out uh, and repost with attribution, you know, that's awesome. We can get that sorted out. Um, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six inputs that keeps us within the limit for this PCB. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. We've got a few screws here. So we've got six uh, of these uh, screws. I'll put the exact dimensions uh, in the description of the Thingiverse page. And uh, we've got some filament as well, uh, a screw for the PCB, uh, the five way and all the printed pieces as well. All right, so without further ado, let's get uh, assembling. Uh, so of course, these items uh, can be wired up in advance and then inserted into the grip. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, base unit here. So this fits through like so, and then uh, gets slotted into the base like this. And that gives you access to uh, insert two nuts in these holes and then uh, screws in the other hole. So I'll just try and line these up here. Okay. And then I will 
enlist the aid of some power tools for this one. Okay, so that's through there. that spins quite freely very little slop in that uh, happy with that uh, this is again the v1 trigger uh, and I've left the top open so this just falls right in there we go and then you can use a piece of filament to go straight through and that will keep it in place quite nicely uh, so now It's like so. Take the five way, make sure that the little tangs here, the metal pieces are on the top and bottom, not side to side. And then we will fit that into this square piece here. Uh, should be a nice snug fit. It might take some finagling. Nicely. And then we've got two holes here again for some filament, uh, which has corresponding holes on the inside, and that just keeps it in place. And when this is wired up, um, I'll usually just put a dab of glue there and wipe it, and that keeps these in place quite nicely. And then if you want to remove the switch for any reason, let's say you have a surge and it gets fried, uh, you can just pull, you can just push on those uh, from inside with a pair of pliers, and uh, that pops them up quite easily. Um, it's just a, uses a little bit less hardware, um, which is, uh, makes it easier to modify and also a little bit less expensive, uh, which is nice. Um, so then we're going to do the push button here. That goes in like so. And this is, uh, very similar style to the P1 push button from the F4 Phantom Grip. So this should be familiar to most folks. And the red cap goes on top just like that. Now this does also have a hole, uh, so that lines up with this hole for a piece of filament as well. Um, it is quite snug, as is. Uh, I haven't had the need for the filament just yet, but different printers have different tolerances. And so you might find that you want to run piece of filament through just to just fit it. Now, I've uh, not lined it up perfectly, but once aligned, uh, you can stick a piece of filament through there and then just snip it off with their cutters like so. Um, okay, so we've got our five way, our push button and our trigger all in here. And you can see that there's a slot cut uh, so that the wires can come up through the top and also so that wires can go through uh, for the five pin mini din, which comes out the bottom. And that all goes on to this uh, 4021 shift register, which I've put in the cap plate here. Again, trying to make it uh, a little bit easier to access. Okay. That's the idea, um, that these two would uh, screw into these corresponding holes. Uh, if I run the print a little bit slower, um, those will come out better, uh, but that does give you enough uh, to uh, keep it in place. Um, so then we'll close it up from the top here. So there are four screw holes.
last piece is just press fit for this piece right here. And again, got up, down, and push, uh, which is really nice. And so that, folks, is the completed assembly of the F4E Wizzo grip. Uh, and again, the nice thing here is that everything wires into that 4021 shift register and the wires for the five pin mini DIN run all the way down the back and comes out the bottom, compatible with the Thrustmaster uh, bases. Now you can hear a little bit of a wiggle in there with the shift register. Um, I think when I complete this build, I will just put a dab of hot glue on the bottom of the PCB and stick it to the top uh, plate here. Again, that, that is removable if necessary, um, uh, but uh, technically if this is a slower print, uh, those holes will be smaller. So again, we've got the two-stage trigger. Uh, this is used for radio antenna, uh, uh, like half action, full action. The IFF button is right here and then the antenna scroll as well. And then I believe these are also used for the uh, pave spike pod as well. So that's the build, uh, that's the assembly. In a future video, uh, uh, I'll showcase uh, how to link it up to your Verpal software. Uh, although I've covered that in previous videos, um, I've also covered the wiring of these shift register boards in the past, and I'll link those in, de in the description if you wanna go ahead and get started with that. Uh, but I'm going to post these files to Thingiverse. Uh, they should be live by the time this video goes live. And uh, I will link them in the description as well. And I'd love uh, to hear your feedback on the build. And uh, I really do love seeing the makes uh, on the Thingiverse page. So if you do make one of these and, and decide to post it, um, you know, that that is so cool. I just love seeing uh, these builds out in the wild. Um, in a future version of this grip, I will have a version that has the proper um, base component to it as well. Um, I haven't built very many bases, mostly I've focused on grips, but this one is quite unique, so it would be fun to uh, mess around with uh, these these Hall Effect sensors that I got. So I'd, I'd like to uh, get a Hall effect base going uh, for this that will fit the same physical dimensions as the real uh, F4 component. The only part that I'm waiting on right now for that is just the uh, 3D files for the F4 Phantom to be released by Heepler. Um, so they've said that they're going to release them uh, at some point now that the F4 has been released. Um, once we have those reference files, there will be a lot more projects from a lot more uh, makers and builders. Um, I was able to uh, 3D model this based on the photos I was able to pull, like screenshots from the model viewer. Um, so if you go into orthographic mode on the model viewer, uh, you can get a pretty good top down, bottom side, etc. views. Uh, and so I was able to approximate as best I could. Um, so that, that comes out pretty accurate, but for panels, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, because they are at an angle. Um, so it's easier once we have the actual files from Heepler, and I'm sure once those go go out, uh, you'll see a, a whole bunch of other builders coming out with their own designs, probably for this as well, uh, and, and other F4 components as well. The dream, of course, is to one day build an entire F4 cockpit, uh, leveraging various building techniques, including 3D printing, uh, laser cutting, etc. Uh, but for now, we're starting with the uh, grip components. Uh, I love these, you know, it adds a little bit of extra immersion when you're using uh, the right kind of control uh, on the, on the, with the jet. So um, I hope you all enjoy and uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'll have uh, quite a few more videos coming out related to the F4 and other uh, related build projects. Again, thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring, and we will see you in the next one.